So the coast was clear, right? If Yenny Malkin goes out of the lineup and it's okay for Danton Heinen to score again. Am I following the script? Good morning to you. Good Wednesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer up Daily Shots of Steelers and Pirates where you found this. Penguins 4, Bruins 2 here in Boston. Covered it. Still not sure that I saw what I saw. Your favorite hockey team did not play particularly well, with the exception, really, of the goaltender. Tristan Jari was out of his mind. And maybe that's not really the terminology I should use, considering Brad Marchand once again redefined it at the end of the game. But I'll digress here because the game changed when Heinen scored twice in a 28-second span of the second period to tie the game at two. He didn't do anything extraordinary for either goal. He just kind of did his thing. The guys got a finishing touch. He has... No real hesitation in releasing the puck. And when he does, he tends to put it in a pretty good spot. Which is why, over the past few weeks, when everybody's been fixating on this or that going wrong with the Penguins through that four-game losing streak, I kept coming back to the supporting cast guys not scoring at all. It's one thing if they kind of drop off a little bit, but it's another thing to not score at all, especially when you have guys who to this point in the season had done it. Heinen was one of those. Obviously, had nine goals through the first 30 games. Looked like a really pleasant surprise. Then he went 10 games with none at all, and if you go back over it, There weren't even that many chances, and the handful that he had, he kind of shanked. So all of it seemed out of character, and none of it seemed to be, you know, Gino's fault or the disruption of chemistry or whatever. So yesterday morning here, I asked Heinen, and listen to his answer carefully, because remember, this is before his couple of goals, these two questions. And how important is it for everybody throughout the lineup to get back to contributing, um, yourself included. We saw when this team was at its best, everybody was rolling. Yeah, 100%. I think that's huge. I think, um, you know, those, obviously, the big guns are are firing, and and you love to see that, And you don't, but you don't always want to, you know, rely on them. You want to, you know, have a good, uh, you know, kind of supporting cast, I guess, that helps helps uh, with the offense. And, um, yeah, I put pressure on myself to, um, to produce, so... Um, just got to stick with it and, and try to get back on that train. I was gonna say, is that part of the mindset that has to make it in? You would just use the word supporting cast, but you know when those guys were out, you weren't the supporting cast. That you have to make sure you understand your your contributions are still needed. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I think everybody knows that. Um, you know, and um, yeah, it's just it is what it is. Sometimes it, it doesn't go in. Sometimes it does. And um, I think, like you said, we're a you know we're a a pretty deep team, and, and when, when everybody's contributing, it, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great squad. So Pretty reasonable, level-headed take, right? He's a bright guy. And he's so bright, he knew what I was actually asking. I was basically saying, dude, when are you going to score again? You know? And he knows that. And he knows that. So wait till you hear the question I asked him after the game. This portion of Daily Shot of Penguins is brought to you by the good people at the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, where they're committed to providing food for all of our neighbors in need across western Pennsylvania. They, in turn, need your help. Find out how $1 can be turned into five full meals for those in need. Visit pittsburghfoodbank.org. Okay, so Heinen comes into the Bruins interview area at TD Garden, and before he takes a seat, I 
made a joke with him like, hey, good to see you again or something like that because it's very rare in pandemic times to get the same player twice in the same day. But here he was. So he sits down and I throw this at him. How important is it that you guys, I'm kidding, it's secondary scoring. Uh, how good did that feel? Yeah, no, that was fun. It uh, you know, felt good to, to see it going a couple times there. And um, yeah, hockey's a funny game, you know. It uh, doesn't go in sometimes and then, you know, two going in one shift. So um, yeah, no, it was fun. Again, good for him. Good for him. Better for the Penguins. Because they need these guys. One thing I will stubbornly stick by through this season, no matter how well the stars play, no matter how automatic power play one becomes, is that this team is no longer suited to win championships on those guys' backs. I am saying this respectfully. I am saying this even in the context of the Penguins getting the kind of goaltending they're getting right now. It's a very good hockey team, but it can't be a great one without significant contributions from all four lines. That means Heinen. That means McGinn, who made the tremendous backhand saucer pass to set up Heinen on the first goal. Just a beautiful play. A prettier pass than it was a finish, and it was a pretty nice finish. That means Evan Rodriguez. You know, he's now at 13 games with no goals, and yes, he did look a little bit smoother at center, but he also passed up a chance to shoot late in the game when he had a break down the right side. Two other chances to shoot as part of the second power play unit, and both times just took forever to get the puck away. He's squeezing his stick into sawdust right now. He has to snap out of it. Zach Aston Reese can't just keep playing hockey and not scoring, and he and I talked about that yesterday morning. He said he's making it more of a focal point, not just zeroing in on defense. That's good. That's important. He needs to score. Dominic Simon, I'm not going it, to. It's such low-hanging fruit. He's not going to be in the lineup for game one of the playoffs, so it's not really something to worry about. Comes like Beavis. He's just never going to score. You know, it's just not going to happen, and Waiting and wishing and hoping for it's a waste of time. But Teddy Bluger will be back at some point. He's on this trip, by the way. He's eating well, which surprised me uh, when I asked Mike Sullivan about that yesterday, given his condition with the broken jaw. That's a good sign. That doesn't mean they're going to rush him back, obviously, with an injury like that. But he'll be back, and he'll help contribute to the scoring. All of these guys need to pitch in. Because you can get yourself a W like this here, get out of town, and the two points still count. But when it gets to serious hockey later in the season, you're going to need a lot more of those hind and two goals than anything else that you saw from the Penguins here last night. When we come back, just one question. Welcome back. It's time for Just One Question. That's brought to you always on this program by Fubo TV. The monthly cost of cable is over 200 bucks. Fubo TV is 65 bucks a month to watch all the same channels, including AT&T Sportsnet Pittsburgh. And right now, Fubo TV is offering our listeners of this show a seven-day free trial and 15% off your first month. Just go to FuboTV.com slash DK. FuboTV.com slash DK. Today's J1Q comes from Jay Warner, who asks, why weren't at least 10 Penguins and maybe an assistant coach on top of Marchand? Come on, it's our goalie. (laughs) 
I have no doubt there were a ton of people watching that final minute and thinking the same thing. It's just not who this team is. It's just not. And it's not going to be. They're not going to change that. They're not going to go seeking revenge. They're not going to take retaliatory penalties because it's not part of what's being put into them by this head coach who is very much in charge of this particular process and mindset. And if you want proof of that, after the game, as players came into the interview area and I asked each one of them, what did you think of Marshan's behavior at the end of the game? What did you think of your goalie being attacked like that? It was just, nah, didn't see it. That was what Dumoulin said. Uh, not really much to say was what Heinen said. Jari himself had nothing to say about it. And then and, and then I pressed him to make sure that, you know, he had to have had something, right? This was this was how I approached that. Uh yeah, I think it's just the heat of the moment. I think uh everyone's battling hard out there and he's just trying to get the puck to the net and I think the team did a great job. Do you have any kind of problem with it? Something that belongs in the game? What do you mean? Somebody sticking you in the face. Uh it's part of the game and I think uh what say it just stays on the ice. Not a thing. And Sullivan came out with the a lot of the same stuff. Didn't really see it. Out of our control. All the usual buzzwords. Look, if you want the Grant Street bullies or something like that, you're going to be disappointed by this team from now into perpetuity. For now, as long as this man is head coach, this is what you'll get. Remember one thing. The two people over his head, Solomon's head, in this organization, are Ron Hextall and Brian Burke. Never forget that. If you want to know how much those two gentlemen believe in this head coach and what he's attempting to do, this is your proof. Now, would either of those two want to have had something done about this situation? particularly at the end of the game with a two-goal lead when it really wouldn't have hurt. Yeah, I think so. I think that's a safe guess, right? Yeah. But they didn't get it. Why? Because they believe in what this coach is trying to do from the bigger picture. Are they going to fight like hell behind the scenes so that Marchand's match penalty, which... Results in an automatic hearing, but not necessarily an automatic supplemental punishment, is going to be heard loud and clear at the league offices? You bet. You'd better believe that Burke, more than anyone, and bearing in mind that his son works in that office, or whatever it is that you'd want to add to that, will be spitting fire over this. But you're not going to see it on the ice. You're just not. Now, there is one additional thing that I want to add to this. The right edge of the press box where I was set up was right over that scene. And I can tell you that when it happened, not the initial uh, shot that Marshawn took to Jari's head that set Chris Letang off and got everything going initially, but the stick jab to the mask that's what resulted in the intent to injure penalty. I can tell you, I didn't see it because I wasn't looking at it because it was nowhere near the play. And I shouldn't even say the play. It's nowhere near where people were scrapping with each other in the near corner. Marshawn looked like he was heading off the rink. And no one could have expected it, even with this Looney Tune, that he would do that. I do believe that it would have been very unlikely that anyone on the rink, other than obviously the officials, 
would have seen this. I'm talking about from the Penguin standpoint. It's the last place you would have been looking. So you saw what Latang and other players' reaction was when they saw Jari getting hit in the side of the head a few seconds earlier. They did react. Latang looked like he was going to kill him. But I don't think they saw this. And I don't think they saw it live. I'm sure, you know, they and everyone else will have seen it by the time they get back to the locker room. But, you know, what are you going to do there? So just something else to think about in that before you judge uh, too harshly, you know, questioning their manhood or whatever. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. We will do another one tomorrow. Tomorrow.